Hey friends, what's up and welcome to a monthly reset routine. If you're new here, my name is Selena. I do these monthly reset routines, pretty much just resetting for the new month, budgeting, reflecting, goal setting, and sharing my monthly favorites as well, which could include songs, podcasts, products of the month. So make sure to stay tuned for all of that. I haven't done one of these in a couple of months. If you've been keeping up with me on Instagram, you probably know I've been going through <sighs> Let's just say that the beginning of the new year has been a bit of a rough start. I started by already showing you all my favorite coffee, cafecito of the month, which has been my iced lavender lattes. I'm telling y'all, this recipe is amazing. It's super simple and I highly recommend. So everything, all of my like coffee essentials and anything that I mention will be linked down below on my Amazon storefront. But with all that said, let's get into it. Oh my gosh, this is so good. So I officially unofficially decided that because the first two months of the year were just honestly all over the place. We're just gonna skip right over them and get right into setting goals and intentions. So first we're gonna get into health and wellness. For health and wellness, my first goal is really to try to wake up earlier. And because I wanna start trying to wake up around five or 6 a.m., I know I need to work my way there. So far I have been waking up at like 8.30, but not getting out of bed until close to nine since I don't have to sign into work until 9.30 or 10. So I need to work on that because I need to take back some of the day to have more time for myself, especially while working a nine to five. I also want to work out three days per week. I am actually using this new app called Copilot. Well, it's new to me and I've really, really been enjoying it. I'll definitely talk to you guys more about that later. But with this holding me accountable, I'm hoping that I'll be able to work out three times per week and not have any issues with that. So my overall goal for the year is to try to walk 7,500 steps on average, as you can see in the health and wellness section. And so to work my way there, I want to try to walk about 6,000 steps on average every single day so we're trying to be mindful I'm not trying to hit my annual goal every single day throughout the whole year if that makes sense I want to work my way towards that final goal where 7,500 steps on average will hopefully by the end of the year feel like my new normal so we'll see we're, we're working towards it. And then my goal, I'm trying to stay away from the word goal because my intention is really to start running again. So if that means I just walk jog one time every week this month, I would be really happy. So I'm gonna try to do that. And then getting into personal and professional intentions. So I've been off my YouTube uploads because of just everything going on, my computer breaking down, all the hardware issues, my external hard drive breaking down, all of that in addition to the personal issues that I've been dealing with and my mental health just trying to deteriorate. So listen, I'm not trying to give excuses because they're not excuses, they're my truth. And it's just been rough, y'all. I wanna get back into my routine. My upload schedule was Tuesdays and Fridays around noon so that I can watch the premieres with you guys. I love premiering my videos so that we can chat while we're both watching my videos together. So if you're not a part of the premiere, Fam, you should definitely join. I'm always sharing when I'm gonna post my next video on my Instagram, so make sure to follow me on there. My goal this month is to post two videos every week once again. I'm gonna aim for Tuesdays and Fridays, but I'm trying to give myself grace. So as long as I post two videos per week, that's the goal. So make sure you have all my notifications on so that you don't miss a video. I also want to take a course on project management. That's something that I've been wanting to do. I wanna find a good one, and I also wanna see if I can do it during my work day. So I need to work that out out with my job, which I have some exciting updates coming up, but I will share that in a future work vlog. I also started going to church at 9 a.m. here in the DMV area at this place that I was actually going to with my boyfriend for a few months. And I think we've decided this is where we're gonna try to settle down for our church and like build a community. So fingers crossed, this is the one. I just have come to realize when church hunting, that there's no such thing as a perfect church. There's no such thing as a perfect pastor or person but there is such a thing as a church that makes you feel comfortable and welcome and safe and this church has made us feel that way so I'm really excited fingers crossed and the goal is to go there every single Sunday at 9 a.m. and progress from there like I eventually want to join a group and maybe join like a service group or something but we're progressing and that's all that matters I also want to read a book which I made my goal like in January and I haven't finished a book I keep restarting the
a book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because it's really good, but then I'll put it down and I won't read it for like five or six days. And then I forgot where I left off, so I restart it. It's not even that I just forgot where I left off. It's like I forgot where my train of thought was, if that makes sense. So I'll just restart the book. I've read like the first 70 pages several times. So the goal is to try to either finish that book or just give up on it and start another book. As much as I want to read self-development books, I also just want to read and like actually enjoy reading. And now getting into the financial intentions for March. My goal is to invest at least 5% of my nine to five paycheck into an additional investment account. So I recently increased my Roth IRA. And I also recently learned that as a federal employee, my Roth account is separate from everyone who works for like private sector. There is a limit on it put in place by the IRS. It's capped at like $6,000 for the year. But as a federal employee, we actually have our own version of a Roth IRA, which does the exact same thing, but it's specifically for federal employees. And the cap for that is substantially higher. So I wasn't maxing out how much I could actually invest in that. I actually increased my contributions to like 25%. So they're gonna be taking out 20 to 25% of my paycheck every single month. I won't even see that money. It's gonna go straight into my investment accounts. But then in addition to that, the money that I do take home, I wanna invest an additional 5% into another investment account. I wanna try to get into investing either options or index funds. I'm still not 100% sure on what way I wanna go. I'm pretty sure I don't wanna go into cryptocurrency or none of that. I'm very much risk averse. So I'm trying to go the safest, smartest way while still taking risks enough so that my portfolio is diversified. So we will see. For now, I just wanna do that. I do get questions about how I invest and it's always changing as I'm learning. So that is my update for this month. And then I also wanna max out my Roth IRA for 2022, which I think I'll have until mid-April to do that. Again, I have my federal Roth, but then in addition to that, I can still also contribute $6,000 to a Roth account that is separate from the account. So I actually have that additional benefit as a federal employee, which I didn't even know about all these years and I am shook, but at least I'm still young. Like I can still take advantage of these things. So I actually opened another Roth IRA account separate from my government one. I think I'm gonna pull the money that I have in my savings for my YouTube income and just max out that account. So I also want to continue resetting my business spreadsheet. So I've shared with you all my monthly spreadsheet, my goal tracker. I have it for sale on my website, which by the way, if you're interested in this sheet or spreadsheet or any of the things that I share today, check them out down below. So those are my intentions for March. Book tracker is looking a little bit empty right now. Like I said, I really have not been reading as much as I had been before. Hopefully I'll be able to incorporate it more into like my morning routine again or my night routine. My bucket list right now, there's not really anything that I want to add to that. I do want to make sure that I travel somewhere outside of the US this year. I think the only place that I've gone outside of the US was Canada and that was in 2019. I mean, I went to Mexico too growing up when I was younger, but I don't count that. Like I wanna go somewhere in my adult life. That's the goal. Going down to the second half of my goals and intentions templates. I have these three milestones intentions that I wanna track throughout the year. So the first one is my road to 100,000 subscribers. So I'm pretty much just going to keep track of that. So for February, I started out with 62,800 subscribers subscribers and I ended out with 63,464 subscribers and listen I'm grateful for every single person who subscribes to my channel who watches my videos likes my videos for one I love engaging and chatting with you all and for two it really helps to support my channel so thank you as you saw I had a lot more growth in January I went from 56,000 to 60,000 but I was also posting more often February has just been kind of a little rough patch so I wasn't really expecting a ton of growth but even then I still saw some growth in my channel, so I'm super thankful. So with that said, this month I'm thankful for my supportive community because honestly, I've been going through a rough time, like I said, and on Instagram, you guys have been like DMing me when I share my updates and all of that, and you've been super kind, and I just wanna thank you because I'm really, really grateful for that. 
So this is the budget tracker that I made and shared on my website at www.selenatrevino.com slash shop. So if you want to check it out or consider purchasing it and supporting me that way, make sure to check out the link down below. And I'm always available if you guys are having any issues with any of my trackers or sheets, which is why I love having these available for you all because one, we can do our monthly budgets and everything together while you're watching my resets. But you can also leave a comment down below if you have one already or if you have any questions, please, please, please comment down below so that I can answer your questions. So one thing that I noticed in the monthly budget that was not working well, I don't know if it was when I copied it over, but it's an easy fix. So I'll show you guys right now. And the first thing that we're gonna fix, it's these categories, because if you look at them, for some reason they're linked to the January spreadsheet, which is not correct. So you're gonna go to this and then here where it says drop downs, that's the wrong formula. So we're gonna click on that. Then we're gonna move up in our March monthly budget, clear this out, and you just wanna select the data range as the categories section in the variable expenses, that entire section, that way if you make any revisions to any of your categories, it'll automatically autofill the dropdown list. Click done after that, and now it should be linked correctly these should be the correct categories right here. So just make sure you do that and everything else should work pretty well. The other thing that you might need to change, so this data chart is supposed to be linked to the expense tracker within the same month. However, for whatever reason right now, it is not. So you're gonna double click on the pie chart, go to setup, and then here in the data range, as you can see, it's linked to the January page. I don't know why. You're just simply gonna change that to March by putting MAR and then click enter and it's linked. Now it should work. Also, I set this up later, which is why this older version might not work. If you double click on the dates, you'll be able to select a date from the calendar. But if you have the old version, like if you bought it at the very beginning, I hadn't implemented that yet. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. So you're going to go into the expense tracker, select every cell under dates, and then you're going to go to data, data validation, and then go to add rule. Instead of drop down, you're gonna go to is valid date and then just click done. After that, it should work because it'll only allow you to enter a valid date. So all you have to do is double click and then it'll show you the date. So at this point is when you can start tracking your expenses. So to prepare for March, all I'm gonna do is enter my budget. So some of you asked me how to break up my monthly reset into bi-weekly but all you have to do is just name each paycheck a different source of income so paycheck number one paycheck number two so my first paycheck let's say i don't have any overtime or anything i actually don't know what it's gonna look like because i did just allocate more money towards my roth ira or tsp so i'm not sure how much it'll be so these are definitely estimates it might be less and then my other income is business income which is just an amount that i pay myself every month from youtube and it varies depending on my needs and anything that i don't pay myself goes straight back into investing in my business for example i just spent three thousand dollars to buy a new macbook in order to be able to edit this video and i had to make that upgrade so that's just an example of when i would pay myself three thousand dollars in order to buy that if that makes sense I have like an emergency fund for my business as well and like a savings account different savings accounts my business income is usually primarily just my Google Adsense which is the amount of money that I make from you guys watching my videos and like watching the ads so it's on average around 2,000 right now right now it might be less because I haven't been posting videos but this is just an estimate I'm just making my estimated budget for certain categories so for rent that's not really gonna change it's gonna be about 1850 and then my Wi-Fi is always $80 so that's already set in stone and then as you can see you'll be able to see how much you have left to budget I actually shouldn't add this yet it'll take into account how much I estimate or budget for income and then how much I'll be able to spend I'm also gonna add additional income 
I've been adding in any money that I get paid back from Venmo, like when David pays me half back on groceries or whatever, I add that as additional income. And I also add bonuses if I get any money from like overtime or anything like that. So additional income, say $600 and bonuses. I don't think I'm gonna get bonuses this month. Just an example of how I would break down my income summary section. In addition to Wi-Fi, I for sure always pay for renters insurance. And I don't have a car. These were all just for the future, I guess. Okay, so for very variable expenses for March. I will probably want an entertainment section so I'll just go over here and copy this because I'm also gonna want it in March as one of my categories. Food delivery, I took that and made it its own category because I want to see how much money I'm spending on Grubhub and like Domino's and just ordering food to be delivered to my place. That's been really interesting to see. So for utilities, I'll say around $100. Groceries, my half of the groceries because my boyfriend and I split it since he pretty much lives with me. He doesn't live with me, but he kind of does live with me. So he helps with groceries, which are really expensive so let's say 350 each probably closer to 400 especially because we don't always split it sometimes I'll just pay for groceries myself dining out I'll say 200 shopping now that I have more categories I'm able to differentiate shopping on Amazon for like myself versus shopping on Amazon for house cleaning supplies and stuff which is why I have a home and living category so shopping let's say like 200 though I doubt it because I don't usually buy stuff but you never know oh actually yeah I'll probably spend more than that because I actually have a bachelor party for my friend that I need to go to in April so I might buy stuff for that. Self-care. I've been enjoying this massage place. I went there one time but I think I'm gonna start going there more often and it was around $120. So I'm just gonna put $250 in case I get two massages this month. Coffee. I usually make coffee at home but I have been enjoying a good strawberry matcha from Starbucks lately. Listen y'all, if you haven't tried this, it's probably old news because I think it was like a TikTok trend at one point that I didn't know about but I was craving a strawberry matcha so I just Googled like how to make that at Starbucks and it has been amazing y'all. So I've been getting a grande iced matcha light ice with strawberry cold foam. It's so good. Y'all have to try it. So even though my coffee budget usually wouldn't be very high, listen my matcha budget that's a little different. So let's say like I don't know like a hundred dollars. Also because I tend to treat my boyfriend to coffee or breakfast whenever I buy it for myself. So yeah it kind of adds up. Uber and Lyft I don't think I'm gonna spend any money on that especially now that I'm able to borrow my boyfriend's car sometimes since he's no longer able to drive to work so kind of a bittersweet thing because it works out for me so that means public transportation I might not even need to have that category anymore but we'll see travel I don't plan on going anywhere in March oh but I do need to buy my flight for Vegas $500 no let's be honest $700 Okay, home and living, I've been enjoying and I need to focus on like reorganizing the kitchen and I might need to buy like a new rack and stuff for my closet to organize that, to organize that, to organize that better as well. I don't even know, let's say $100. Entertainment, I don't really go out to the movies or anything lately, but I do wanna start having more interesting like date nights. I know when we went to New York City for my birthday, we went to this really cool jazz club and DC has so many events and like comedy clubs so I'm just gonna put like 150 for that because I want to start going to more things hopefully and then food delivery 150 so yeah 2500 would be a lot also keep in mind I don't really fill out my savings so much for you all especially since my business income is usually what feeds my savings accounts and just honestly for personal safety I think it's best that I don't share that so just know that I am saving money probably more than 20% of my total income I I am saving up for a house and all of that as well, which I will share with you all whenever the time comes. So just know that even though I'm not filling this out right now, like for example, the rainy day fund, I already have my rainy day fund where I want it and I have money set aside for other things. So I'm good, but this is where you all would be able to go in and add like your savings goals, your sinking funds. If you have any questions about this, let me know. So for investments, I already kind of talked about that. 
I already have it automatically pulled from my paycheck, about 25% of my paycheck. This is the money after that investment is made. But let's say for the Roth IRA through Fidelity, I'm gonna wanna pay like, I think in order to max it out, I think I might have to pay like $2,500. So again, this is honestly money I would pull from my YouTube savings that I have, like my business savings. So if anything, it says negative that much. So I'll just pay myself more this month in order to max out my TSP before taxes, if that makes sense. Debt, I don't have any debt besides my student loans, which I actually have enough money saved up just in case I have to pay those off, like if the Biden administration doesn't cancel them. So I don't really have anything to pay towards debt. So, so far we're looking pretty good. Honestly, the only thing that I'm focusing on now is just like trying to find ways to better invest. And I will say one of the biggest advice that I will give is if you can try to increase your income by doing a side hustle. I'm just blessed that it turned out for me so well that I'm able to do something that I love doing. And it just eventually became a side hustle that I got money from because the first two years I was not making any money from YouTube, y'all. Let me tell you. And I was still posting every single week because I just love it. Just believe in yourself and if there's anything like any hobby that you want to do definitely do that but if you want to make like extra money it's really worth it like I've found so much peace of mind not having to just live paycheck to paycheck but it's taken me years to get to this point. One thing that I wanted to add to my wish list would be a Roomba vacuum because I just noticed that it's been a hassle to have to bring out my entire vacuum in order to vacuum my entire apartment and honestly with hardwood floors you have to vacuum like all the time. So I think that's something that I might want to get in March maybe April we're gonna see. I also need to do more research on which one would be a good buy. I also need to make sure that I buy my plane ticket to Vegas. So that's pretty much it. All that I need to prepare for my monthly budget. What's been the most helpful for me personally is actually keeping track of what I've spent and where my money is going. Making sure that I remember to Venmo request my boyfriend for certain things or catching if I got double charged on something. Just being more cognizant of where my money is going, where I'm spending my money has been super, super helpful. So for me, for budgeting sake, it's actually actually more so the tracking part that has been helping me versus setting budgets that I need to adhere to. That's not really what I'm about when it comes to budgeting. At least that's not what works for me personally. So yeah, keep that in mind when you see my resets. If you have really important time constricted savings goals, it might be more important for you to be more strict and to actually set a budget. But for me personally, I don't have any time constricted goals. Yes, I would love to buy a house and a car, but I'm also in such a great place in my life right now where I don't need those things in order to live. Like I can walk to the grocery store. I have a comfortable place to live with the gym and it's very convenient. And my career can still change completely so I don't feel like I'm settled enough to buy a home. So just keep in mind, you and I might be in completely different places in our lives and that's okay. And so budgeting might look completely different for us and that's okay. I just wanted to kind of like throw that into this. Take my budget with a grain of salt. That's why I made this tracker template to help you guys because it can be used in so many different ways. That's gonna be it for the monthly budget portion of this video. Okay, so now we're gonna get into at least my favorite part of this video, which is my monthly favorites. So first I'm gonna share a couple of favorite songs. I don't, I don't usually share favorite songs, but I feel like I'm trying to venture out a little bit more and I think it'll be fun to kind of share it because you'll kind of see how my music taste is literally everywhere from month to month. So three of my favorite songs this month were No Se Va by Grupo Frontera. It's just amazing. If you know, you know. And of course the second song is Bebe Dame by Grupo Frontera. Also so good. Oh, so good. I don't know what was wrong with me that for so long I wasn't really listening to like Mexican music, grupos and bandas and stuff, but I've definitely been getting back into that. I swear I go through phases. The same thing happened to me in college. And I just also always don't really share the songs that I listen to, but I noticed I was just listening to Bad Bunny all the time. And listen, I love Bad Bunny, okay? Don't get me wrong, but I also wanted to kind of diversify 
Spotify, the music that I was listening to, it was like Café con Leche playlist, Bad Bunny, and then jazz music was all on repeat. And so now I also started listening to Mexican music again, and I love it. Also, the third song, my favorite song this month on the list is Kill Bill by SZA. Her new album is honestly amazing, and I'm always listening to that too. So those were my three picks for this month. My favorite podcast episode of the month was actually by Erica Taught Me, which you may or may not have seen her on like reels or shorts or TikToks. She's always giving like financial, any legal advice that's not really advice. She gives tips essentially. The episode that I listened to and that I liked was called Investing Advice from One of the Most Powerful Women on Wall Street. I thought it was a really, really good episode and I left that episode feeling more empowered to invest and to stop overthinking it. I think I'm risk averse as a person, just as someone who is very analytical. I mean, I'm an economist, but not only that, I chose a degree in college that required me to think really critically. And that's just who I am as a person in general. I overanalyze or maybe I just analyze everything. And it also happens to be true, I think, for women when it ta- when it comes to taking risks financially and in different ways in our lives compared to men, I would say that in general, okay, this is not true for everyone. The podcast goes over how women tend to be less likely to demonstrate risky behavior, especially when it comes to, specifically in this case, when it comes to finances and taking huge risks when it comes to our finances. And it's so true. And so she talks about how, you know, we tend to be stuck in the thinking phase over analyzing, like, where should I invest? First, I should learn how to invest. And oh my gosh, if that's not me, like I had never felt so seen. I thought it was just a me problem, but apparently it's just very common. And and it makes sense that it's common for a lot of women, which is part of the reason why the wealth gap is so substantial when it comes to gender. It was just a really good podcast episode and I recommend it. So now let's get into my favorite products of the month. This part is always so exciting, probably because I just, I don't know, the last two months were really, have been really rough for me because I don't usually shop this much. Yeah, anyway, so let's get into some of my favorite products. So first, of course, of course, we have to talk about cafecito, my favorite coffees that I recently started purchasing from Nespresso. The first one is the Valtesso Espresso Pods. So they're like a mild roast, similar to blonde roast. Really, really good, has a very light flavor. I think I was kind of getting tired of Nespresso for a while, just because I continuously was purchasing medium to dark roasts and those just have like a much heavier taste, you know? I mean, that's kind of the point. So now that I switched to a mild roast, I'm really loving it, I'm enjoying it. And then the Starbucks, blonde roast espresso pods. Y'all, it's so good because any flavor or milk or anything that I add to it, it just like complements it so well. And it's just what I go to on days where I don't want really strong tasting coffee, but I want to get the taste and I still want it to do its job, like give me a little bit of energy. Anyway, highly recommend those two. Another thing that I have kind of changed and been working on the past couple of months is switching from regular like cleaning products and just household product to some products that are maybe more natural or just less toxic. Listen, my bleach, my Lysol, it's not going anywhere. Like it's just not going anywhere because there's no way that I'm gonna just clean my toilet with vinegar. I just, I can't. I can do that for like the sink and like the majority of my house. But when it comes to disinfecting the toilet specifically and like the bathroom, I just don't think I can let that go because sanitary reasons, you know? I don't know, that's me personally. But overall, I do think that using non-toxic, less toxic products is gonna be better for me and for the environment. So I will be using a lot less of those other products and I'm also switching over like my dishwasher detergent And so I've bought this one from seventh generation Which is supposed to be a lot better for the environment and just like safer for us in general So I just feel better purchasing it and I will say I tested it out a few times and it left my dishes really clean So I actually filmed like a cleaning video which should come out pretty soon Keep in mind that video was more so like a self-care deep clean video. Since that video, I've been more intentional about what I'm using to clean, how I'm cleaning, and I'm trying to learn better ways to clean. Another thing that I switched was my body 
body loofah. So I threw that away because I just started doing all this research about how to take better care of my skin, shower routines, and hair care routines. So one thing that I changed was, I guess, upgrading from a body loofah, which holds a lot of bacteria, to silicone shower brushes. And I did a lot of research, looked at a bunch of different ones, and this one just seemed like the best fit for me because it's not super thick, so it's just easy to clean out after I shower. So it gives me peace of mind. I also leave it on the other side of the shower away from the shower head so that way it completely dries between each wash so I don't feel like bacteria is like accumulating. And on top of that, it also has like these little straps, I guess, where your fingers can go in and your hand can kind of hold it in place. Cause I saw some other silicone body scrubbers that were just not the move for me personally because I just feel like when you're scrubbing your body, you can't really scrub very well if it's always like moving around in your hand. So the straps actually help keep it in place. I've been loving it. Another addition that I made to my shower routine is this amazing exfoliating body polish from Dove. Granted, my entire shower routine has completely changed and upgraded and I'll share that in another video that I'm so excited for. I think I might do like a whole shower hair care routine video specifically for that. I have sensitive skin and I also have, it's that condition where you have excessive keratin. I've always had that since childhood and I've never really taken care of it, especially because I also have eczema. I just have like all these like skin conditions that are not fun. So I started using this not as my main body wash, but as my secondary body wash. My main body wash is like this one by CeraVe for gentle skin which I think is really good and I've been noticing a huge difference on my skin being so much softer. One thing that I invested in I guess that I've always wanted is a spa bathrobe. Let me tell y'all this one is like under $40 and it feels so luxurious. So luxurious. It has changed my entire routine and the way that I see showers. Like now showers for me that's Selena's spa time. Like that's me taking care of me. If it makes me happy, that's all that matters, which is why I'm sharing it. So definitely check out this robe. Okay, another thing that has really upped my coffee game and just like my morning coffee routine is this small glass pitcher that I got in order to froth my milk. It just makes it more fun because it's just aesthetic. Like in real life, I'm just looking at it like, whoa, this is so cool. One thing that I use on my New York City trip when I traveled to New York for my birthday is this tripod selfie stick or extendable tripod thing. Oh my gosh, guys, it's amazing. It fit in my purse. I was able to carry this everywhere. With this tripod, you can take it anywhere with like a medium sized purse and just stand it. It extends to pretty good height, like five feet or something close to it. And you're able to take pictures everywhere you go. It's so cool. And it comes with like a little Bluetooth remote. Game changer. I think I saw it on Lena Lift one of her travel vlogs and I bought it from her so she influenced me I also bought so I bought a lot of things the past couple of months because I was also traveling quite a bit so it makes sense everything was hectic but another thing that I bought was for my trip to New York it's this really beautiful long wool trench coat pea coat jacket I don't know it's beautiful I love it I love the color I wasn't sure about the color but I didn't want to go with black or gray because it's just I wear black and gray all the time I've been wearing this coat every single day it blocks out the wind so perfectly. I ended up buying this pea coat in a bunch of layers because I thought I would be freezing, but I ended up only having to wear this with like a regular shirt and I was warm with a scarf. I was Gucci. So highly recommend that if you're looking for a pea coat and it was under $130, which is still kind of expensive. But if you know pea coats and all of those types of coats that are like nice, but warm, it can be really expensive. And I will say this coat is really good quality personally for me because it looks it's nice, it's fashionable, it's comfortable, fit well, and it kept me warm. So you know, what else? What else could I want? But if you watched up until this point, make sure to comment down below a coffee or a matcha emoji, depending on which one is your favorite. Like maybe you don't like coffee, but you enjoy tea. Make sure to comment that below with your comment or just comment that alone to let me know that you're a real one because you actually stuck through this entire reset and caught up with me because y'all are my online besties. But I really just wanted to catch up with you guys. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this kind of video. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps support my channel. But with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all in the next video.